G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now, one of the superpowers of SharePoint is its ability to manage documents. Now, ironically, it is also one of the biggest pain points and struggles that people have given the results of a recent LinkedIn poll that I have shared. Now, what we're gonna have a look at today is how we can use metadata to organize our documents, which in turn will also alleviate another pain point or struggle, and that is the ability for you to find your documents nice and quickly and easily. So, this is your idiot's guide or beginner's guide or metadata for dummies, however you wanna call it. This is your starting point. Let's get stuck into it. So we can see here, I'm in a SharePoint document library. This is kind of an end result of what we're going to have a look at. We can see we've got a library. It does only have four documents in it, but imagine this library does have thousands of documents in it. Not a folder in sight, but what we're doing is we're using our metadata. Now, first of all, a little bit of theory. What is metadata? Well, let's have a look at what Copilot gives us in regards to what metadata is. So I'm gonna jump into Copilot uh, on the web and I'm gonna flick over, I'm already in the web here and what I'm gonna do is paste in a prompt here to get a little bit of an explanation. So in the context of, Share, of a SharePoint document library, can you explain what metadata is? Explain it to me like I'm a 12 year old and provide me with two different examples, okay? So let's see what it comes back with. We'll find here um, and we can see here that Think of metadata uh, like information on a library card. So 12 year old, we all know what a library card is. When you go to a library, each book has a card. It tells you all about the book without having to read it. Includes the book's title, the author, when it was published and what it is about. Now that is the metadata for that particular book. So you can think of that in a similar context to that of a document. So here are two examples of metadata. We've got a document title, the name of the document, uh, and also the date created. Now SharePoint comes with a set of out of the box metadata or system metadata that is already there in a document library. Now we can see two of them here. We've got modified and we've got modified by. Another two is created and created by. So they're two system types of columns or metadata that come with a document library. These ones here that you can see on the screen, function, document type, and document owner are three additional custom columns or metadata that I have added to this library to help me structure and organize this library in a little bit of a, a better way. Now, what that allows me to do is say, uh, create some views of this document library or even filter this document library and say, just show me everything that's being classified or tagged with human resources. But how do we go about building or using this metadata or creating this metadata in the first place? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back onto the homepage of the Copilot Studio communication site and I'm gonna create a document library. Now I'm going to create a blank document library here and I'm going to call this one policies. So we'll start with our library. This is going to be where we store all of our policies. I'm gonna show it in the navigation so that'll appear across the top and the global nav of this site. There is our default SharePoint document library. You can see I've got modified and modified by, that's metadata about any document that I upload into this library. Now you can see here that I can show or hide columns in this document library. And again, these are all the default out of the box system metadata columns that come with a SharePoint document library. Two of the common, uh, two other common ones are created and created by. We can select these and we can hit apply. Now SharePoint also does an auto, uh, or have an automatic ID numbering system as well with any item or document that gets added to a document library as well. So now I've brought those into the view of this library. Now let's add some custom columns or some custom metadata to this library. Now I'm going to only use what's called a, a library or a list column. So this is just specific to this list. If we wanted to take it a little bit of a step further, then we would probably use things like a site column or something like that it, that is reusable. So a column that we create that we can reuse across multiple libraries in this site. But we're just gonna start with a simple 
library or list column. So you can see that we've got add a column and you've got a number of different data types that we can use for our columns. Now one of these could be a choice column. So let's add a choice column here. Now we need to give this column a name. So let's call this function. All right, and we then can provide some choice options for our function column. Now I'm gonna ask Copilot, can you list uh, 10 common um, departments in a business? And then we're gonna grab these, uh, these columns or these, um, these items here. So you can see that we've got HR finance, um, can you please just list list the names? List the names. And we'll see, hopefully we get a, a cut down list. There we go there, all right? So we can see that we've got, uh, now remove the numbers. And we could have combined this into a single prompt, obviously, but um, we'll just, chain them together. So we'll, we'll jump into here. Now the great thing here is we can go control V and all of a sudden I've got all of my options and my function business functions uh, pasted in there. So there's our first metadata column is functions. Now I'm just gonna drag this right across to be the first. The next one that we're gonna have a look at, and if I jump back into my control documents, you can see that we've got document types. I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, can you do the same for common document types? And let's see what it comes back with. So we're just using this as an example. And here we've got letters, many, these, are, these look pretty good to, to, for this example. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy these. I'm gonna jump back to my library. And now I'm gonna add a column for choice again and I'm going to call this document type. So there we go there. And again, I'm gonna select in the first, I'm gonna hit paste and I'm gonna save. All right, so now we've got two additional metadata columns on our document library. Let's add a different type of column this time. So we are going to choose a date and time. We'll click next, we'll go review date and we'll keep everything the same and this is just going to be where we can manually put in a, a date for the next review of our policy in this case. We're gonna continue on here. So I'm gonna add a column and I'm going to now select person. Now this one could be document owner. All right, I'm gonna leave it. Uh, we're gonna show the profiles and we'll hit save. Now the last one we're going to have a look at here is we're going to pop in a choice column again, but we're going to say document status. So now what we've got, let's go um, new, or let's go draft, uh, let's go approved, let's go in review in review and we might just add one more and go superseded okay and we'll hit save so now what we've done is we started to create our metadata structure we've got functions we've got uh, our out of the box we've got document type review date document owner but let's clean this up a bit so i'm going to go show or hide columns and i'm going to turn off created uh, by modified and modified by and let's just leave our custom columns here so we'll move id across to the to the right hand side here and now here these are our columns or also known as our metadata now let's upload some documents so i'm going to just um, pause here and we're just going to upload a few documents all right, so let's drag a few documents and upload 16 documents into our document library. I'm just dragging and dropping them. You can see they're uploading all of our numbers here. You can see that they're auto-generated with our numbers. And you'll notice that we can also, because of our metadata, we can go smaller to larger or we can filter and we can sort and things like that. Now you'll notice that these aren't set by default. So now what we can do is we can either go through these individually. So I can select a document, hit the information icon in the top right hand corner here in this case and i can say this is finance it is a um it is a proposal uh the next review date for this proposal is going to be 
the end of the month, the document owner is me, and the document status is in review. So you can see I've now just set the metadata for this individual uh, document. Now we can also edit in grid view, okay? So when I pop this in grid view, you can see that I can then, um, you know, dr uh, like an almost like an Excel spreadsheet, I can set all of these uh, quite easily if I know all of these are for particular, well, in my case here, we're looking at, um, uh, these functions, we can say, right, all of these are these functions. We can also then look through and say, these are a couple of invoices. We might just say these are proposals. Um, these can be a few memos here. And all of a sudden, we're starting to build out a really nice uh, structure or information or set the metadata on our documents. Now, I'm just going to populate and move all of these. These can all be the same, uh, the same review date. They can also be the same document owner as well, just for ease of use for this example. And then we might set, these are approved. We might go uh, for draft. We might pop all of these as drafts and then we might go uh, a few approved as well. So now what we've got is we've set all of our metadata on the documents that we've just uploaded. I'm gonna exit grid view here. Now this looks pretty good, all right? So we're starting to build this out. And again, no folders in sight. <clears throat> so how does that help us with uh, the structure of, or the organization of our documents? It's still just a, a nice big flat list. But what now this allows me to do is create some views, do some filtering and things like that. So I can say, right, let's filter by the legal department. All right, so that's gonna show me all the documents that have been tagged with the legal function. I then might wanna expand that and say, only show me the legal proposals. So now all of a sudden, I've now only got proposals that have been tagged for the legal function, all right? So no more clicking in between, you know, clicking inside folders, inside folders, inside folders. I've got now a really dynamic and easy to use user interface to allow me to then sort and organize my content. So I'm going to just turn these off. The last thing that we're gonna take a look at is uh, creating views of our document library. So by default, a document library comes with an all documents view. We can see that there. But we do have the ability to create new views. So I'm going to say, let's create a new view for approved documents, okay? We'll make it a public view and we'll hit create. You can see that this has been changed to approved document. I can see that I've still got my all documents, but now the approved documents I'm in right now. Let's create the view. So all I wanna do is I wanna filter by approved. Now I've got any document that has got the document status of approved. I can then save this view and save it like so. Now, if I flick over to all documents, you can see that I've got that, that view there, but I've also got now my approved documents. Pretty handy. That means that we can create even link to this particular view. Every view has its own URL or unique address. So that means like on a, for example, a SharePoint page, or uh, I can send a link and say, here are all the approved documents or on a dashboard, a tile that says, show me the approved documents. We've now got a view specifically for that. And we can continue to create these different views. So for example, I can see I've got human resources and finance. So I might create a new view and say approved finance documents and we'll hit create. So now I've got another view. I might say now show me filter by approved and also filter by finance. All right, so again, I'm just changing and uh, chaining and combining my, uh, my filters here. And now I've got approved finance documents. So I'm gonna go again and save this and we'll go like that. So now I've got three views. We've got all documents, approved documents, and then also uh, approved finance documents. So if I jump back to all documents, again, I said this was gonna be the last one before, this is gonna be the last one. Another thing I wanna to touch on here is the ability to group our documents. So again, 
functions. We've got a little uh, drop down arrow here. I'm gonna group by function. Now all of a sudden I've got my uh, all of my documents grouped together by that particular uh, that particular tag. All right, so here's all my finance documents. Here's all my human resources documents. And you can see what I did there is I clicked on the title and it actually just takes me and gives me that particular view of those documents as well. So I'll close this off. Now, one of the good things here is I can drag and drop over on top of one of these headings when I've grouped them and watch what happens. So I'll go finance, I've dropped that on finance, it's uploaded, that employment offer letter has actually been automatically tagged and the function has been set because I've grouped them by that particular function. Now the same thing could happen if we did by document type. So let's remove group by functions and we'll go group by document type. Again, I've got this grouped here. There's the one that's been un is called unassigned because I haven't set that. That's the one I just dragged and dropped. But if I now drag and drop another document onto a pol the policies document type, it's uploading and you can see that has now changed from five to six. And now this here has been automatically set to policies. Obviously, I then need to go in and edit the other metadata and look at the function uh, the document owner as well. And then we can set the additional bits of metadata. All right. So there we go. Your uh, beginner's guide, idiot's guide, uh, metadata for dummies, uh, metadata 101 uh, on how you can use metadata to organize your documents in your SharePoint document libraries. It gives you a ton of uh, different uh, example or um, different approaches to be able to organize your content, but also on the flip side of that, be able to find them and sort and slice and dice and get to the documents that you're looking for. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode.